Hey there, Oak here, playing some more Civilization 6 And well, today we are left of what we for the first episode, as usual. In this episode, we did capture all of these five cities, about that. Yeah, we have grown a lot, and this episode, I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. So, I was planning on attacking US next, so I will probably start doing that. I will just start moving my units from top to bottom and uh, getting these cities down here and those exploring while while I'm doing that. Yeah, Rome will be very angry at us, but they are huge and I need to get bigger before I attack them. So, as I said, I'm going to attack US. And what else I'm going to do, I have no idea. But since we are going for the domination victory, we will need to attack them. And we'll see what else we will do when we are going through the episode, I guess. Yeah, and we most probably need to build a lot. That's also another thing, because AI in this game isn't the best. At least the one I'm playing with. Maybe at further difficulty they are playing better, but right now they do not do much improvements like they have hills they have a lot of stone and they did not improve any of those so i will be going around this area and some cities of my own still don't have all the improvements so i will be doing a lot of building and a lot of random improvements like these and maybe some industrial zones, some commercial hubs and a lot of entertainment complexes. And now because of the fact that we have defeated Scythia, some states really don't have any uh, southern points left all on them. For example, Lisbon was their city-state and now it's only being imposed by three people, Trajan, me and Philip, I think Philip is Spain, I, yeah, I guess so. And so we can claim these if we want to. We have four influence points. Like if we just put one in, we can claim that. Or if we finish some quests for them, we can finish that. But we don't have any quests on this one. So I will just put one on that. And uh, that will mean that I will be their suzerain. I think they do provide some benefits to us. For example, yeah, they do provide us with those truffles and those fish that they have, and they do give us plus four gold in every commercial hub thanks to our third envoy. And we do have some commercial hubs, so we will use that. Also, uh, Hong Kong is the same. We have one envoy in them, and that's the most anyone. I has because I don't even think that anyone found them. No, I think they found them, but no one is even bothering to get any influence points on that because it's so far away from everyone, except for Spain. So we will uh, make some cities up there as well. I guess one is city in there, one city up there when we take over the whole continent. So yeah, we will also get their suzerainship in a few episodes, I guess, but not right now, and they, uh, as the same as to the other civilizations, they don't really have any benefit to me right now, so I will just leave them like that. And the US has moved some units to here, I, like if they even attack us, swordmen are really powerful, they do deal a lot of damage to our hoplites, but they won't be able to kill us, so it's not a big problem. But uh, we have a traitor because Kabul wanted us to get them a trade route, and so I send it, and it turns out it's moving from down here instead of up there. So, yeah, the US can do some things to that, so I will need to be careful when I start attacking them because. Having this uh, trader out of the way when I attack them and taking, yeah, like killing all of their units before they can plunder it could be real nice or it may cause some problems. It won't really cause many problems, but still, 
Uh, having that there wouldn't be nice. Yes. Everything worked as planned, yes. Of course I... Well... He wanted to avoid this. In, I know, but the idea of peace left him no choice. So... Well... They did declare war on us. Cataract uh, is there. Is the state... What else? I don't think they have any other statistics, so it's not a big problem. I don't think Kabul is theirs, is it? No, it's not. They have good relationships with Ted Roosevelt, but Ted Roosevelt isn't their suzerain, so they shouldn't be attacking because they will be just protecting their own borders. But this means that we will need to start this war without uh, most of our units because they are way up there still most of them well that's not optimal but i don't think that it should be a big problem we have one crossbowman here we can start quickly moving our hope these two hoplites down here and we do have some more some more units on the way so so we, yeah we shouldn't be have any problems I guess before they can defeat our cities I guess we can take care of two swordsmen and two crossbowmen before they kill any of our units well that at least means that uh, we won't get the uh, warmonger penalty for starting or with We'll just get the Warmonger penalty for taking over their cities. Why do I even care about this since uh, everyone is already hating us and denouncing us? I have no idea, but... Yeah, it, it's just on the side kind of nice thing that... We won't get the instant Warmonger penalty and that means that... Uh, the Roman Empire won't be really angry at us and... Uh, attacking us immediately and making some units in here it doesn't take long so we can maybe quickly make some more units and now we cannot make any uh, hoplites because hoplites were uh, our special unit instead of the spikemen I guess are they are not called spikemen are they what are they called Spearman, yeah, Spearman. So, uh, pikemen are the new units after that, so instead of those, we are producing pikemen and we can promote them to pikemen if we want, but yeah, we cannot make any, uh, any more hoplites, so we won't be getting any special benefits that we get with that unit. So now we will be going for pikemen as our melee unit or swordsmen, but pikemen are more powerful, but swordsmen take way less time to make, so it's a tough choice. I think I will quickly make some swordsmen, maybe live with the military of Artusha because it does have a pretty nice military, two swordsmen and two horsemen. We are protecting them, so it's not a big problem. Why is there a been swordsmen here? They are up there, I have no idea. So, we can level their military or they are at the border with US already, so they will be uh, fighting them back if US ever tries to come from this side. I don't know, wait, no, I will be just going for the swordsman and uh, trying to get all of my units down here as fast as possible. And... Well, even if they take over Miletus and Athens, we still have like a lot of cities and we can just crush them immediately because we still have a lot of military strength, even though but most of our military strength is up there in here, we still have a lot of, so it shouldn't really be a problem, as I said. 
and they have pillaged our trade route. How nice! And we have a lot of units actually. That was fast. US has really moved their units slowly, and so uh, our units are almost all here, and the US didn't even start attacking us. So, another nice thing about barracks, I totally forgot about this when I was talking about them. When you make a unit in here, the unit uh, is starts at the barracks if the city is if the city has another unit in, in it. So we have a crossbowman in here and so the swordman started in here. That's not great for us. We will need to move our swordman in here, but it's just nice to know. And I will start moving my units towards the actual war zone, which will be the new the inside of US's borders because their old cities will also be mine. And we have our first six uh, government slot government. Six of six slot government. Six policy slot government. So I still don't know what they are called. And well, the first one we have is the monarchy. At the same time, all land melee units gain plus four combat strength. It's really nice, like really nice. So I guess I'm gonna uh, keep this one because this one I don't want to keep. Like fifty percent production towards defensive buildings, I don't really care. I want to get theocracy. I'm I'm gonna research that in the civic tree next time. I'm gonna research this next. Because I need this first, then I will research theocracy, and that will allow us to buy land units with fate. So, since we are taking over a lot of cities of other civilizations, we will be generating a fair amount of fate. Like right now, we are generating 30 fate per turn just because of. I guess they have one uh, whole site in here. In Pakrovka and I guess one in here, yes. So with just those two whole sites, we are generating 30 fate per turn. And considering just that uh, both Spain and no, I don't think Rome has that, but Spain has also has some whole sites, so they will be generating a lot of fate and uh, being able to buy some units with that will be nice. So we can claim our first great general, which will be providing plus 5 common strength and plus 1 movement to renaissance and industrial land units within 2 tiles, so this will be helping us for a long long while. It won't be helping us with most of the units we have right now, but in the future it will. So I will recruit that, I get plus 5 combat strength and plus 1 movement is nice, I don't really know. And when we get rid of all of those units, when we pass to the next units, we can uh, retire him anytime we want, and so he will be generating some a relic for us, I guess it was, it was, it said yes. It doesn't really give us anything, I guess it just maybe attracts some tourists, but it's just nice to have some more comic strength and everything. I don't think that we even have any renaissance era units. Yeah, the, the only renaissance era units are musketmen and the bombard. We will get some bombards, I guess, in the future. Musketmen, I don't know, maybe we also will. And industrial era units, there are some nice ones in there, right? I guess that will give us, but modern anatomic era units, he doesn't provide anything for them, so. I know, we will retire, most probably retire when we get to that point, so since he is not helping us with anything, we will just put him to sleep right now. And we found the next continent. So I just sent out some random units, like some um, levied military from Zanzibar to explore and our first ever warrior that we had because he he doesn't really uh, help us with anything else. And so they found uh, another continent, so I guess the next continent is in here on the map. 
and it, they don't seem to be very uh, improved, I guess, very good in science or anything, because I think we can see actually uh, in the science someone is leading in the culture, someone is also leading in the religion. Yeah, maybe we we are going to war a lot in our continent and stopping everyone in our continent from expanding, but they don't seem to be really good because they still have a lot of problems around there, so I don't think that they will cause any problem with domination victory. As you can see, they are like in the last two places and just one in front of Teddy Roosevelt, even though we just defeated a couple of soldiers of Teddy Roosevelt. So it's just nice to know that we won't have any problems with domination victory, most probably when we uh, go to the other continent. I just hope that they won't, don't win with the science victory before we can dominate them all. We'll see. And we can claim a great admiral. Wow, we are claiming a lot of people. So this one provides plus 5 common strength and plus 1 movement to classical and medieval era naval units with 10 2 tiles. I think I'm gonna pass on that. Because when I'm going to attack the other, uh, I will need some great terminals when I'm going to attack the other civilizations on the other continents. And so, uh, combat strength to, to classical and medieval area units will not really help me. So I'll pass on that and get someone who will uh, give us common strength to our... Um, Industrial, at least industrial era units. <laughs> he wants to make peace for five gold. Yeah, sure. I will take over all of your cities before we make peace. And Hattusha is going around and pillaging US's areas. Well, how oh, nice. And we have made a new set state, by the way. I guess in there, yeah. And I have realized that we don't really have many cities on the coast where we can uh, make powerful units that will go through the sea. So I wanna do some more of those. We can, uh, we will be able to train sea units from this city up there. We will be able to train some units from Argos, but some more could be nice. So I will buy this land and I will start making a harbor in there just so that we can train some units in Exos in one of our big cities and we finally start attacking the cities yeah it took way longer than I thought to just move our units because this is some really tough terrain they have in here like look at how many hills they have how many mountains all around there but that's nice for us I guess we will have a lot of production in that area at least. We met the Republic of Congo. I think they are the civilization in here. This one. <laughs> this time it's even less. He wants to make peace for three gold. Not thank you. And so we have moved our unit in here and no one can enter this city because these are all closed off and these are also under the control of this unit so it's under siege and it will no longer be generating any help as I mentioned last episode. And that will really help us when we are attacking it. Because that means that we will need to attack it less. And in a turn of events, Kabul is attacking us and doing a lot of damage. So that's a slight problem, but I don't think that they should be causing a lot of problems. They, they do have a, a strong military, but... Our military is stronger. For example, if I get the spikeman to attack that unit, even though we have a river in between us, we will do so much damage without even taking any at all, uh, almost. And we are losing a lot of units. But I don't really care because, like, the units we have right now are so powerless against all the other units because they, these are like medieval area units and 
we are so far ahead right now and the other events are doing so much more than so I was going to need to get rid of, rid of them some way so this was just the first fast way to do that and we need some more units in here because there's just one hoplite left in that area and now he just wants to make peace without even giving me anything nope thanks and now we should be able to enter boston because this unit has a lot more health yes and we just go in like that and this is the first city of us that we uh, captured and we will definitely keep that city because we need it because it's close to the war we will have and well there are still a lot of cities to capture and they are they have been sufficient of everything well that's always how it is after war and we have finally got the theocracy can my land un combat units with fate all units plus five religious Strength in theological combat. Yeah, I don't really do theological combat, but the uh, buying units with fate thing can be really nice. Uh, one more economic policy and one more policy, whatever I want. Let's go for plus one production of these. It's not the best, but when you have like 30 cities, it, I think it can help. And for the wildcard policy, we will go for plus two gold from all trade routes. We do have a couple of trade routes and uh, when we are expanding, we are building a lot of uh, things that are giving us trade routes like, uh, for example, those commercial hubs and harbors. And so, yeah, we will have a little bit more trade routes so we can always use a little bit more gold. Still the same thing, make peace for nothing, nope, thanks. We will take over all of those cities, as I said. But I guess that will be next episode. I just want to take over New Orleans this episode because this took much more time than I expected. Wow, they did a lot of damage. The musket man. Well, we are getting one in here, but wow, am I afraid of them right now? Yeah, as you can see, they do like a lot of damage so probably the only way to get rid of those musketmen will be to get my old musketmen to kill them and this exactly shows why i say that the units i right now have are not the best and that i need to advance a lot more these are doing so much damage renaissance air unit maybe i will be able to do some damage so that i can take it over my only hope is that so did I? Finally. Finally. Oh, I'm so happy right now. So finally New Orleans is ours. Of course I will keep that city. That city is huge. It has an encampment. It has everything. So this did take a lot of effort, but next episode we will take everything from America. They don't show how much military strength left, so I think the only military strength left is this musketman and maybe just two or three more units, so we will buy a, a lot of units and I think we will uh, capture the whole America next time. So I guess with all of that uh, great people and all of that war, stressful, stressful war. I guess this will be it for this episode. I hope I'll see you later and bye bye.